It's so, so important that for Big O, you know the different order of complexities by name and also recognizing their graphs as well. Now, all of these are functions which are written in terms of n, which is the input size, and n's on the x-axis on a graph. The y-axis will either be time or it might be memory space. And the first one has a graph like this. Now, what is the name of this? This is called the constant time or space complexity. And in big O notation, we write it as O1. This means no matter the input size, it always takes the same amount of time or uses the same amount of space. The next expertly drawn graph is this one. It's very flat and becomes even more flat as n goes up. This is the logarithmic complexity written as O log n. This is our dream. This is what binary search has. Linear search has this graph. And so this is our linear time complexity. Performance is directly proportional to the input size. And we write it as O n. We're doing these in order of best to worst. And the next one, actually, if you flip back and forwards, kind of starts a little bit better than the pink one, but in the end, it does become steeper. So this one is slightly worse than linear. This is log linear, written as O N log N. It's nowhere near as good as logarithmic, despite having log in both. This is much steeper and more steep than linear. But it's not quite as bad as this complexity here. This is a polynomial complexity which is often on squared, but could be on cubed as well. And there's one which is even worse from polynomial. This is the exponential complexity, where it's often o2 to the power n. And this one grows really fast. It means it performs really badly as the input size is big. And if you look at all of these together, we should be able to recognize each line based on the big O function.